गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ द टॉपिक बायोडाइवर्सिटी टुडे आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट द वेरियस थ्रेड्स एंड द लॉसेस ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी डिस्कस अबाउट वेरियस लेवल्स ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी एज वेल एज इट्स वैल्यूज सो लेट्स स्टार्ट अवर टू डेज लेक्चर द लॉस ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी इज कॉज बिकॉज ऑफ नंबर ऑफ फैक्टर्स सच एज changes in the natural habitats pollution caused by man made activities on natural activities climate change which is uh, greatly responsible for uh, the loss of biodiversity over exploitation of natural resources is also causing uh, death of number of plants and animals resulting into loss of biodiversity as well as introduction of uh, invasive species to any region now talking about the threats on the biodiversity threat is something that presents an uh, imminent danger or harm to anything the few major threats to the biodiversity are as follows the loss of habitat because the areas of forests are shrinking now uh, due to uh, man made uh, activities such as deforestation encroachment developmental activities etc and that is leading to uh, the loss of biodiversity on this planet another threat is poaching which means uh, illegal hunting and trading of uh, any plant or animal as a whole or its any part any part of its body that is also uh, resulting into uh loss of biodiversity then uh, invasive species many times if uh, any plant or animal species enters to an ecosystem which is uh, uh located at any place and if that particular plant or animal is dominant in nature then it will start killing uh the existing biodiversity of that area so because of entry of uh, these Uh, foreign species or invasive species we are losing our biodiversity to very great extent another reason could be man and wildlife conflict which we'll discuss in the next slides then uh, definitely climate change is also responsible for uh, death of plants and animals pollution in the form of air water soil pollution is uh, causing the loss of biodiversity at a very frequent rate so now we'll discuss one by one uh, about these major threats the first threat is loss of habitat the greatest cause of biodiversity loss is due to farming grazing clearing forests leading to the species fighting for survival we are doing the developmental activities in the form of uh, urbanization at a very large scale construction of hydro power projects to any area construction of uh, dams establishment of uh, industries to any area as well as uh, creation of new highways airports etc and for all these developmental activities land is required now what we are doing that we are uh, using the agricultural land mainly for carrying out these developmental activities now when the agricultural land is uh, utilized for these developmental activities then farmers encroach forest land to uh, maintain their agricultural land <coughs> many times if any develop developmental activities is uh, proposed to an area where uh, a forest or any other natural ecosystem exist then it results into uh, construction in that particular ecosystem uh, leading to the cutting down of trees which is highly responsible for loss of plants and animal species in that area so that loss of habitat is one of the most important threats on the biodiversity destruction and losses of the natural habitat is one of the major causes of biodiversity loss throughout the world due to land use changes billions of hectares of forest and the grassland have been converted into agricultural land 
pastures, settlement areas, or developmental projects during the last century. So, uh, the, th in this picture, you can see the degraded forest in the Indonesia uh, because of uh, loss of this habitat. You know, you can just imagine that how many different varieties of plants and animals had swept away, f swept away from this area. So, uh, loss of habitat is one of the major reasons of biodiversity uh, loss. The second threat is poaching. Poaching means illegal trading of wildlife products such as furs of animal skin, hides, horns, tusks of elephants, etc. By killing prohibited endangered animals uh, also result into loss of this biodiversity. Although there is an international ban on trade in production from endangered species, that is through Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. And this ban came into existence uh, on July 1975. Besides this ban, illegal poaching is going on rampant in many parts of the world, including India, due to uh, the high value which is associated with uh, these products. So, hunting, poaching, and illegal trading is also responsible loss of biodiversity. The third threat is invasive species. As I discussed before, that an invasive species can be any kind of living organism that is not native to an ecosystem, and it causes harm. If that invasive species is very dominating, it will not allow the another species to exist or grow to the area where it is uh, growing. These species can harm the environment, also the economy or even human health. Invasion is considered as the second most important threat to the biodiversity after habitat destruction. The example of some of the invasive species are Lantana, one of the world's worst invasive species which is also found in India. So, through these images you can see uh, on the left side you can see the image of Lantana species which you can also easily see uh, around your uh, uh, area. Second is a water hyacinth which uh, uh, is not a native species of India and it was uh, brought to India through South America and it is an aquatic species which grows on the surface of ponds. And once it grows on the uh, pond water, it uh, spreads very uh, frequently and it destroys all the existing species which are growing on the surface of any pond or uh, lake. So, water hyacinth and lantana, these are examples of the invasive species which are responsible for loss of biodiversity. Uh, the fourth threat is climate change. A changing global climate threatens species and ecosystems. The distribution of species is largely determined by climate, as is the distribution of ecosystems and plant vegetation zones. We know that climate play a very important role in uh, shaping up the biotic component of any particular ecosystem. And it can be easily understood uh, by the different uh, varieties of plants which are growing in different ecosystems. The trees which grow in a desert is altogether different from the plants which grow in a pond or any other aquatic ecosystem. This, this change in the varieties of uh, plants as well as the animals is only because of uh, change in the abiotic components which uh, forms the climate of any area. The climate change may simply shift these distributions, but for the number of reasons plants and animals may not be able to adjust because of the global warming the climate is changing now and earth's global temperature is increasing up and many species which are very sensitive to the temperature they are not able to cope up with this uh, changed temperature and as a result of that we are losing large number of plant and animal species every day so climate change is also responsible for loss of biodiversity on our planet the next threat is man and wildlife conflict. 
the recent years there are increasing news of wild animal intruding to the human settlement areas many times uh, what happens that uh, if there is any uh, forest in uh, an area and usually uh, people uh, get settled on the outer peri periphery of these forests because they are allowed to settle in uh, <coughs> outskirts of the forest area and most of these people they cultivate uh, agriculture practices cultivate uh, different types of crops for their livelihood if any wild animal comes out of the forest and destroys that crop then or causes any harm to uh, any person uh, the people who are residing in uh, outside areas they in retaliation start attacking on those wild animals and that is known as man and wildlife conflict so uh, i'll cite one example uh, in odisha 195 human beings were killed by a wild elephant not a wild ele uh, elephant by many wild elephants in past 5 years and in retaliation the total 98 elephants were killed by the people in th those 5 years so it's a big loss to the biodiversity we lost 98 elephants in 5 years because of this man and wildlife conflict in mysore also several instances of the elephant killing were reported uh, in uh, kote chamaraja nagar area mainly due to damage of crop done by the elephants the major reason behind this conflict is due to loss of wildlife habitat and also due to the fragmentation of natural habitats so this man and wildlife uh, conflict is also uh, causing the death of number of plants and uh, animal species the next threat to the biodiversity is pollution be it water air or land pollution all forms of pollution appear to be a threat to all life forms on earth however it plays a major threat to the biodiversity when it comes to the nutrient loading of the elements nitrogen and phosphorus so because of air pollution plants <coughs> get adversely affected in terms of uh, their stunted growth or uh, uh, lack of chlorophyll formation process in uh, the leaves of the plants so uh, the air pollution is responsible for a uh, number of diseases in the plants such as uh, chlorosis necrosis uh, abscission of uh, leaves stunted growth etc uh, also the water pollution as well as soil pollution uh, causes a great damage to the uh, biodiversity including plants and animals so pollution is also responsible for uh, loss of biodiversity and it is one of major threats uh, on the biodiversity now uh, we had discussed about uh, the various threats on biodiversity now we will talk about the distribution of biodiversity at global national and local levels there are at present near about 1.8 million species of plants and animals known and documented by the scientist across the world however the scientists have estimated that number of the species of plants and animals on earth uh, could vary from 1.5 to 20 billions this means that only 2% of uh, only 10% of the total uh, existing biodiversity has been documented yet thus the majority of species are yet to be discovered the terrestrial biodiversity of earth is best described as biomes which are the largest ecological units or we can say that the large ecosystems are known as biomes present in different geographical areas and are named after the dominant vegetation for example the tropical rainforests tall grass prairies savannas deserts tundras etc approximately 50 to 80% of the global biodiversity lies in the tropical rainforest however these forests are not yet well documented the temperate forest have much less biodiversity however there is much better documentation of these species in the previous lectures also we have discussed about uh, tropical temperate and boreal forest so our entire biodiversity uh, especially the terrestrial biodiversity is uh, distributed in these forests tropical temperate boreal etc 
Now, if we talk about the biogeographical classification of India, our country can be easily divided into 10 major regions based on the geography, climate and pattern of vegetation seen and the communities of mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, insects and other invertebrates that live in these areas. The 10 regions which di are distinct biogeographically are trans-Himalayas regions such as area of Ladakh, then Himalayan range for example Uttarakhand, area of uh, mountainous areas of Uttarakhand, desert areas in Rajasthan, semi-arid region of uh, semi-arid region of Gujarat, then western ghats uh, of Kerala, the Deccan Peninsula in Chota Nagpur, then Gangetic Brahmaputra region, then all the coasts, long western and eastern belt, northeastern states, then islands such as Andaman and Nicobar. So, these are 10 different regions which are divided on the basis of geography, climate and the pattern of biodiversity. So, this is how the entire India has been divided into uh, the various uh, biodiversity distinct regions. Now, we will talk about some of the categories of uh, the plant and animal species which uh, we often uh, discuss whenever we talk about biodiversity. The entire species of plants and animals can be categorized into certain categories. The first category is known as extinct species. This uh, designation is applied to the species in which the last individual has died or where systematic survey have been unable to lock even a single individual, example dodo bird. So, this is a pic of dodo bird which uh, has uh, extincted from uh, the earth now. So, any species which is not seen in its natural habitat since past 50 years will be declared as an extinct species from that area. The second category is endangered species. These are the species that are at high risk of extinction because of uh, the sudden and rapid decrease in their population or loss of their habitat. The example of endangered species is Sumatran orangutan. This is a pic uh, of Sumatran orangutan which has been declared as, a, as an endangered species. Then uh, one famous endangered species from India is Bengal tiger. So, the species whose number uh, is continuously declining and it has gone below, below a cri critical number and that is because of loss of uh, habitat as well as decrease in their population. So, uh, these are the endangered species. India has near about 500 uh, endangered species documented so far. The third category is critically endangered species, the species that are facing an extremely high risk of extinction in the wild. The example is uh, red wolf. So, an image showing the red wolf. So, it has been uh, documented as critically endangered species. The next species uh, category is vulnerable species. These are species which are likely to become endangered, although their current uh, number is above the critical level. But uh, if the circumstances threatening their survival and reproduction will not be improved, then they will be likely to come under the category of endangered species. The example of vulnerable species are African elephant. Uh, you can see through this image uh, the African elephant which has been uh, documented uh, or declared as a vulnerable species. Another species category is near threatened, the species which are dependent on conservation efforts to prevent them becoming threatened. Although they are not engendered endangered or uh, vulnerable at present, but uh, they depend on the conservation efforts which can prevent them becoming threatened. The example of threatened uh, category is European otter. Uh, this is an image of European otter. Uh, this has been uh, categorized as near threatened species. 
and the last category is least concern these species do not qualify for any above mentioned category the examples are rock pigeon honey bee mosquito common juniper house mouse human beings etc so that was all about the different categories of uh, the plant and animal species and uh, which tells us about uh, the necessity of their conservation so the species which are critically endangered or endangered threatened or vulnerable all those species require uh, special attention and uh, more conservational efforts so as to prevent them from becoming extinct so that was all about today's lecture in the next lecture we'll talk about some more topics so thank you for today